most of the information you can find online is usually all about retail trading. If you look for institutional trading, you can't find much about it. Smart money trading is perhaps one of the best kept secrets in the world of trading. Once you discover institutional trading and learn how smart money plays their orders, you can implement these concepts to your own style of trading and see much better results. So let me show you several smart money concepts you must follow in order to finally become a profitable trader. There is no indicator, robot or mechanical trading system that will make you money if you don't understand how and why price moves. In reality, if you rely your decisions on indicators, you're not really trading the market. You're just really plugging numbers into a few mathematical formulas. Indicators have absolutely no flexibility. They are just an equation that is used over and over again, regardless of market conditions. Stochastics, MACD, and a load of other indicators are presenting you with lagging information. They may look pretty on your chart and can help you to some degree to view a market, but they don't really help you predict where the price is going in the future. Indicators show you what has happened in the past, but they won't tell you what price is going to do in the future. Indicators used to be a powerful tool, but those days have passed. Stochastic was created in the 1950s, MACD in the 60s, and the RSI in the 70s. Do you see the connection? These lagging indicators were in use before modern computer systems took over the trading world. The problem is that even though computers were invented and people got access to technology, they never moved away from the old way of viewing the market. Trading without indicators is just like eliminating the middleman. Instead of letting indicators to tell you what the market is doing, you can see it for yourself. So the first step, try trading for a few weeks without indicators. Any chart is a sequence of zones where there is supply and demand equilibrium with supply and demand imbalances in between. If you are used to trade classic support and resistance levels, I advise you to forget about them for a second and focus on supply and demand zones, especially the zones where the price is moving away from with a lot of momentum. Whenever that happens, it's a sign that the balance of supply and demand has shifted in a very substantial way. Supply and demand zones are the origins of these price moves. A supply zone is an area at which a lot of sudden selling has occurred. This resulted in an imbalance between supply and demand, where supply greatly exceeded demand, pushing the price down. A demand zone is an area at which a lot of sudden buying has occurred. This resulted in an imbalance between supply and demand, where demand greatly exceeded supply, pushing the price up. I consider supply and demand as a leading indicator. While traditionally, support and resistance levels are only called as such after at least two tests, this is not the case with supply and demand. You only need a supply or demand zone to be created in order to plan a potential trade. So use the following steps to identify supply and demand. First, you find the momentum drive. Here, you're looking for a large price move. Long, successive candles in one direction work the best. Just open any chart and it shouldn't be too difficult to find those. Both the momentum, how fast the price is moving, and the absolute distance, how far did price move before it stopped going in that direction, are relevant here. Of course, the best price moves show both momentum and the large absolute distance. After you have found the momentum drive, you should have defined your base. With the base, I mean the price area just before the price exploded in one direction. Often, you will see a small consolidation before this happens, and that's the consolidation that you're looking for. Especially, try to find the last bearish price action before a bullish price move and the last bullish price action before a bearish price move. This is the area that is responsible for the resulting move. The base of a supply or demand zone is where the orders were placed that were responsible for moving the market in such a strong way.
volume is not difficult to understand once the basic principles of supply and demand are understood. This requires you to relate the volume with the price action. To say that the market will go up when there is more buying, demand than selling, and go down where there is more selling, supply than buying, may seem like an obvious statement. To understand what the volume is saying to you, you have to ask yourself, what has the price done on a particular volume? Think about it. If you compare today's volume with the volume during the previous 30 bars, it's easy to see if today's volume is higher or lower, but you took volume in isolation, and that means very little. Compare this volume information with the price spread, and you'll then know how bullish or bearish the market really is. Volume spread analysis is the type of analysis based on volumes and the spread of the candlesticks. It tries to find out the differences between supply and demand. The price spread is the difference between the highest and the lowest trading points reached during the time frame you are looking at, which may be weekly, daily, hourly, or whatever other time frame you choose. Some traders consider the actual body of the candle as the spread. You decide which method you want to apply. There are a lot of different interpretations of the VSA, which makes it difficult to understand it for a beginner trader. At first, you need to get familiarized with the most commonly used models of the VSA, so make sure you watch this video about volume spread analysis after you finish this one. In order to understand why supply and demand zones can work as the basis of a trading strategy, you need to understand how buyers and sellers behave around the zones. A lot of this comes down to finding liquidity. Liquidity describes how easily an asset can be bought or sold. Where there is a lot of liquidity, we say that the orders can easily be absorbed by the markets. It means that there are many traders willing to take the other side of your order. When there is little liquidity, it might be harder to get your orders filled, because there might not be enough traders to take the other side of your trade at the price you want. You might get filled at a worse price than expected. This is why some institutional traders use special techniques to get a good price for their order. Whenever institutional traders need to open a position, they do so with much larger size than the average retail trader. In fact, their positions are usually so big that if they were to simply enter at once, they would move the market considerably. So whenever institutional traders need to enter a large buy order, they will do so part by part, waiting for the price to come down before pushing the next slice on the market. This creates patterns on the chart, and the more you trade supply and demand, the more you will see the underlying dynamics of certain patterns that happen before supply and demand momentum drives. Another aspect is that institutional traders understand where liquidity is accumulating. Let's take this chart as an example. The institutional trader is looking for enough liquidity to get a fill on his big order. He wants to go long, but he needs to find traders who want to sell their position to him. Below this swing low, there will be lots of that liquidity. First, you will have the stop losses of buy orders, which will sell on the market once they're hit. Additionally, there will also be traders who will go short, again, adding liquidity to the market. This is why you will often see a spike in the opposite direction at the origin of a strong price move. The liquidity spike is the pattern that gets created when large market participants need liquidity and move the market in order to get it. Retail traders get trapped, their stops get hit, and they will often talk about stop hunting, while in fact, this is nothing more than normal market behavior. So now you know how smart money operates and why they operate in a certain way. It's time to find opportunities. The best way to do this is to mark out certain levels, such as daily highs and lows, weekly highs and lows, obvious swing points, and boundaries of ranges. By marking out these important areas of liquidity and then analyzing what happens once the liquidity at these areas gets triggered, you can get a better understanding of how smart money operates. 
you can then make up rules to develop an entire strategy around this concept. Of course, the next step is to backtest the rules and generate data to confirm a trading edge. One of the best ways to identify absorption of liquidity by a bigger player is to look at candle closes and the violence of moves. Is the high of a range being taken out, but price quickly and aggressively falls back into the range, then the buy side liquidity above the range has been triggered and absorbed by the smart money to fill a short order. Waiting for confirmation is often very important. You want to see clear triggering of liquidity and then the absorption of that liquidity in order to join them. Smart money enter the markets to fill orders, generate liquidity, and to hedge their longer-term investments or trades. This is not how us retail traders trade. This is the difference between retail trading and institutional trading. We try to profit from small, directional moves. So how to start trading like banks? Start with being as prepared as possible and treat your trading like you are running a business. Banks don't just let the RSI tell them when to enter. Every position they take is well calculated. They know exactly what they need to buy, when they need to buy it, and how they need to buy it. They know the costs involved. That's how you should approach trading as well. You can start trading like the smart money by following these principles. Knowing your edge, having multiple plans, and reviewing and learning. These are the most important points to consider when you want to become a profitable trader. Not by learning a concept that banks supposedly use, but by approaching trading the same as banks and professionals do. It's absolutely vital to know your edge. Without an edge, you will probably fail. How do you get one? By learning concepts that work in a market. Then you start with building rules around these concepts. The next step is testing it on years of data followed by demo trading and live trading. In order to be able to execute your edge effectively and in order to improve, you need multiple plans. You need a pre-market plan, a plan for executing, and a post-market plan. A pre-market plan is all about how you find the setups with your edge. How do you need to analyze the markets and when? Make it as clear as possible. This minimizes the mistakes you are going to make. The most important thing is that you have a clear, written-down plan. After your session, it's time to analyze. You will always make losing trades. Most traders simply go to the next trade. If you also proceed this way, this means you wasted your money. But if you actually take the time to learn from your losers, that's not wasted money, but simply a down payment for a valuable lesson. If you found value and learned something new, leave us a like. This way we'll know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And check out our academy program if you want to further level up your trading. Until next time.